I've done it. I've done it. After 200 hours, I've made Sacred Beasts playable! Oh. Joseph, they just announced the next structure deck. What? Already? Well, it can't be worse than Sacred Beasts. What is it? It's Charmers. Charmers? And the one after that is Reactors. No. And the one after that is Worms. Please shut up. Oh. Good afternoon, jank enthusiasts. I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. I've slunk through Sacred Beasts, constructed a perfect shadow brew. So, in eternal service to the algorithm, I suppose it's time to take a look at the newest, completely unplayable structure deck. Masters of the Spiritual Arts released in Japan on July 4th, finally giving Americans something to celebrate on that day, and in the five days since, I've been tinkering with an amazing build courtesy of Daisy Rose. Presenting Charmer Dragma. Before we begin, if you are on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I promise I will release from their ancient forbidden prison the lost divine attribute charmer. So here's the list, and yes, I am sorry to say, you will need to unironically play Jester Confi. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. Now, let's chill with some charmers. The Charmers are a series of monsters dreamed up by a Konami designer gone rogue, attempting to make the most convoluted series of cards ever printed. Their lore makes absolutely zero sense. They've got familiars in the form of old OCG vanillas, and then they get hypnotized by the familiars to become the familiar possessed monsters, and then they regain control of their bodies and become link monsters without an archetype. It's a mess. Their gameplay isn't much better, since they encompass three different archetypal names, their support refers to their stat line, and their second evolutionary forms are summoned via a summoning condition from the main deck, which has just about as many ruling implications as you could possibly fear. Worst of all, they don't actually accomplish anything. There's no end boss, no cohesive goal, and no way to finagle one out of the existing Charmer card pool. But when has the lack of a wincon ever stopped us before? The familiar possessed versions of Lina, the Light Charmer, and Dark, the Dark Charmer, and that is seriously his name, search level 4 light monsters with 1500 defense, and surprise surprise, Ecclesia fits that bill. It feels like poetic justice that this archetype is going to be carried by a convenient and unintended statline coincidence. By summoning one of the red-headed stepchildren of the Charmer archetype, the darker the light one, and making use of the entire level 1 link pool, we can pivot through all of the necessary summoning conditions to pop all the way off with Dragma, and even experience an awakening in the form of Reaper of Nefariousness as an extender in the process. So with that, let's get into the card by card. Firstly, the Metal Zoas. Want a piece of Archfiend Reaper, Dark, Lina, and Ausa. While we can't summon the latter, they're a searchable way to fulfill half of Reaper's combo. Next are three Eater of Nefariousness, which is a fantastic extender for Reaper, and three apiece of Lil Dark and Lil Lina. Next are our Dragmas, one apiece of Fleur de Lys and Max, and three Ecclesia. Finally, our one-star monsters, Jester Confit, the only non-Earth, three Turbo Booster, and three Adhara. We're also on a Shadal Beast because I fear God. For spells, we're on three copies of Disciples, three copies of Masters of the Spiritual Arts, the card that makes the deck tick, and one Searchable Awakening. For traps, we're on three Dragma Punishment, one Rook, and a Teamwork of the Possessed for multiple pops on our opponent's turn. Extra space is extremely tight, but we are on Construct, Op Cologne, Winda, Double Bastard, Double Ntis, Dweller, Access Code, Unicorn, Selene, and our critical pivots, Mask, Secure Gardener, Linkaribo, and Anima. So with that, let's jump into the games. Our first match is up against Toon, and my Patreons be damned, I am not looking forward to playing this deck on the next episode. Our opponent's going first, and they've opened fine, I suppose. I'm not exactly sure what qualifies as a playable Toon hand. Our hand is fantastic, but they've got a couple of floodgates we're going to need to chew through. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Toon Kingdom, always they seem to draw it, before activating Toon Page Flip, summoning from deck 
The worst possible card, Red Eyes Toon Dragon. They'll set two and pass. Unbeatable. Will normal summon a copy of Dark, they will activate there can be only one. Will special summon a copy of Nefariousness and make a Mascarena, to which our opponent will flip Summon Limit. We can destroy it by activating Disciples of Nadir and using Natissa's effect to destroy the Floodgate, before special summoning an Ecclesia and activating its effect to add a copy of Punishment to hand. Next, we'll activate Masters to set a copy of Awakening, and also set a copy of Teamwork afterwards. We'll flip up that Awakening, attack over the Red Eyes, and... Make our opponent banish a card. They draw for turn a copy of Toon Bookmark. What a rip. Okay, that means we have to activate Teamwork right now so we can destroy the Toon Kingdom. We'll set this copy of Dark. Then afterwards, we'll activate Punishment in order to both destroy the Red Eyes Toon Dragon and using the effect of Ntis, destroy There Can Be Only One. At end step, we're bringing back this copy of Nefarious Archfiend because then we can flip up this copy of Dark in our main phase and send them to the graveyard to summon from deck the Reaper. We'll activate Reaper's effect, summoning back Nefariousness, Norden Who, and then a copy of Dark using the attack boost of Awakening to get in for well over lethal. So it's time for game two, and last match our plays were imperfect, restrained. This game will showcase what the deck is allowed to do when it's permitted to pop off. Our opponent, a hard liege, I hope I'm saying that right, is playing Megalith, and with each episode, the day during which I have to read these cards creeps ever closer. Thankfully, it's not today. We're going to lead with a copy of Awakening, next we're going to special summon a copy of Tenyi Spirited Hara from hand, then we'll normal summon a copy of Dark, Big Dark requires a Dark Monster, but Link Haribo fits the bill. We'll go into Familiar Possess Dark and draw a card off of Awakening, boy, I sure hope we don't draw the Garnet we were going to special summon from deck. Okay, that's fine, by summoning Turbo Booster we can still summon it from hand, bringing back a Dark and going into a copy of Mascarena, and then activating the effect of Reaper in Graveyard to get a copy of Teamwork. We'll then special summon a copy of Ecclesia, banish the Link Rebo from the Graveyard to get a copy of Maximus onto the field, and activate the Graveyard effect of Op Cologne, as well as, at the end step, the effect of Bastard. We'll be able to flip this copy of Shadal Rook when our opponent attempts to go for anything, which we will do as they activate Belthor's effect. That allows us to fusion summon a Winda from our extra deck, and they are out of summons. Unfortunately, they can walk over us until we flip over this copy of Teamwork, destroy their monster, and prompt the concession. So it's time for game three, and you know what that means, a best of three versus meta. Our opponent's playing... <sighs> Synchron Eldritch. Just a couple more months of this, Joseph. A couple more months and we'll never have to do this again. Our hand is... um... You know, it's pretty interesting. We've got a, a wide array of different, uh... Yeah, it's just a Dragma open. I can't defend this in any way, shape, or form. You're gonna watch Disciples Resolve, and you're gonna like it! We'll activate Disciples, sending a copy of Opcolone, then activating Opcolone's effect to get a Rook from our deck to our hand. Next, we're going to normal summon a copy of Ecclesia and use its effect. Afterwards, we'll special summon a copy of Max from our hand and activate its effect in order to send a copy of Construct and a Bastard to the graveyard. We'll activate Bastard's effect at end step, adding a Flirt Elise to hand, and wish our opponent good luck. They draw for turn... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, we're going to activate Rook as they attempt to summon this copy of Magician Souls. Thankfully, it's activated so we can respond to the summon, and that's their only one. We'll then negate the effect of Magician Souls with Flirt Elise, and after they activate Haketo at end step, we can flip up this copy of Punishment, sending it in Tiss to the graveyard to destroy the copy of Scarlet Sanguine they just set. This should be the end of the game, provided I play it correctly. We're going to activate... Wow, Masters off the top. What a top deck. They're going to set another copy of Haketo, but again, they can't activate it this turn, so I'm feeling pretty good. We'll flip up Awakening, and then... Ooh, Ooh, go into a copy of Familiar Possessed Lina. Don't mind if I do. We'll get an Ecclesia to hand and then activate Maximus's effect again, sending another Ntis to the graveyard and destroying the Haketo like an idiot. Uh, because of that, we're going to get in for a lot of damage, but unfortunately not lethal because this Winda can't attack directly and the remaining set card was a Golden Land Trap. At end step, they're going to be able to flip this copy of Haketo into a copy of Scarlet Sanguine as we add an Ecclesia to our hand off of Bastard. They'll set two and pass it back, activating Conquistador's effect in end phase, and it looks like we aren't going to be able to stop this copy of Eldritch from weaseling its way onto the board. No big deal, we can still win. We'll normal summon a copy of Ecclesia and activate its effect in order to get another copy of Punishment, should this game last another turn, because I'm extremely stupid. We'll walk over all of my opponent's monsters and get in for lethal. So, it's time for game two, and wow, they are really committed to that combo, eh? They're going to lead with a copy of Cursed Eldland that'll add from their deck to their hand the big golden boy himself. Unfortunately for them, that's time in the round. They're going to normal summon a copy of Despot 003 and go into 001 before making Halka Fibrax and using its effect to summon from deck a copy of Jet Synchron. Next, they'll make Auroradon and activate its effect to summon three tokens to their side of the field, and what do you know, with a 001 in Graveyard, they can summon that back as well. Next, they're going to Synchro summon a Herald of the Arclight, activate Jet Synchron's effect. Wait, I don't think this is the way you're supposed to do it. Um, they'll use Aurora Dawn in order to get a copy of Olion, then Special Apprentice Illusion to make Savage Dragon. Well, thankfully, they don't have another copy of Herald. Okay, we might be able to do this. We'll lead with a copy of Disciples. 
Okay, so now we're not going to be able to do it. Uh, we really needed that to resolve. Uh, we're going to attack over this copy of Jet Synchron before passing it back to our opponent and in draw phase, activating Punishment. The first one is negated by Savage Dragon, so we can activate the second one to prompt out the Herald. Unfortunately, that's all I've got. Uh, as they proceed to main phase one, we'll concede. So it's time for that all-important game three and... Okay, this is as good as hands get in this deck. Let's see if we can take it home. We're going to lead with a copy of Ithara, then we're going to normal summon a copy of Dark from our hand, next we'll special summon a copy of Nefarious, and go for the Link Haribo. From here we can make a big Dark and use its effect to add from our deck to our hand a copy of Ecclesia, and then go into a copy of Reaper from deck as well, summoning from the graveyard back this copy of Dark. We will Link summon a copy of Masquerina to fulfill the condition on Ecclesia while adding a teamwork to our hand in the process. We'll special the Ecclesia and activate her effect in order to get a copy of Max, which we will summon by banishing the Link Haribo. We'll activate the Max effect, sending a copy of Bastard and a copy of Opcolone, pitching a copy of Beast and drawing off the top of our deck, Ooh, a Jester Confit! That's fantastic mask material. At end step, we'll add a copy of Fleur de Lis to hand, and this should do it. Our opponent will lead with a Lightning Storm calling Spells and Traps. That's very frustrating. We'll root for a copy of Winda here. Thankfully, the Winda doesn't go to the graveyard. We'll mask on activation of Eldland so we can unicorn it away, and... Well, they can't destroy Winda. I mean, we should be... Oh my god, it doesn't destroy. It sends! Okay, now they can special summon. We get the Rook back. No big deal. They'll bring out Eldlich. They will special summon from hand a copy of Apprentice Illusion. They've cleaned our board, save for the Link 3. So as long as we have one more piece of material, we can go into Access Code and potentially clean this up. They're going to activate the effect of Haketo at end step as we activate the effect of Nefariousness because it's funny. We draw for turn. A fantastic rip! Masters! We're going to set a copy of Awakening and then normal summon a copy of Lina afterwards. We'll go into Access Code Talker and activate its effect, but all we have are darks! We'll go to battle phase and walk over this copy of Eldlich, but we need them to whiff one draw phase. That is the worst possible thing they could have drawn. At end step, they'll activate Scarlet Sanguine, getting Haketo and telegraphing for turn. They drew the Conquistador. In draw, they will blow up our access code, and we will concede. So, we're back with the deck, and wow. I mean, we knew Dragma was strong, of course, but it was shocking to see us go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Eldlich, even if I'm a little disappointed by the end result. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, it's incredibly punishing to opponents who haven't read your cards. Often you're able to cheese people with less information than you via silly card interactions, but when's the last time your opponent lost to the game because they were unfamiliar with the exact text of a card in your deck? Two, Dragma's strong. It's got the ability to toe-to-toe -to -toe with almost anything because of easy win to access, and the Charmers are a great way to get there. And three, it feels as if you are constantly exploiting unintended interactions. The level ones fulfilling all conditions via the extra deck, the searchability of Dragmas because of their stat line. It's not often you feel as if you're beating both your opponent and Konami at the same time. And the cons. One, it doesn't actually use a lot of new cards from the structure deck. This is going to absolutely tank my engagement, but it turns out the best charmers were the ones omitted from the new set. Two, once your opponent knows what you're up to, you're pretty easy to interact with. Destroying the little charmer after a normal summon is a surefire way to end any turn without Ecclesia. And three, one of the advantages of playing a rogue deck is facing a distinct lack of sideboard hate, but by including Dragma, you're opening yourself up not only to cards that beat that strategy in games 2 and 3, but also game 1 extra deck monsters to capitalize off of Max. That's a bad place to be. All in all, this is an extremely interesting way to use the Charmers, but it's unlikely it's better than other Dragma variants or competitive past a local's power level. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons, Meepmoto27, Dominic Ernst, Harrison Karp, Alex Perea, Angel Ferox, Candyman, Innercrest, Mike Carlotti, Seeker, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amid Elefondi, Algis Marcin Cavizius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Blue Boy, Chad Bortz, Chibi Gohan, Chorps Away, CJ Alex, Connor Kid, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Tevs, Devin Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Philorup, Don Coro, Distran, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Fangwong, FUTR, Gustavo Secon, Isaac Jackson, Jane Linya, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Gel Du Rado, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaibacorp Shill, Corey Hess, Kurokaze, Lavender Lemonade, Lawrence, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Erizo Hansen, Meds for Feds, Michael Oskvarik, Miyuno Arashi, Moira Brownwolf, Nick Extreme 99, Nick Dolores, Pro Yugadad, Pro FP2, Sam Soon, Second Shane Meadow at its Pronga, Standards Objectives, Swag Kage, Tim Holloway, Yuri's Best, Zach Janseski, I hope I'm saying that correctly, Zach McKee, Bleb, Dive Missile, Josh, Picnic Blasted, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and someone has gotta tell me how to, how to say this one.
If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.